Alright, I'm going to do a video today. I finally got my um, chicken feed, alcohol, remote set up. Uh, it took me a little doing. I don't know if it's set up properly. I have a plug in it right now so it won't continue to feed while I have it off. I'm going to try something a little different. So I'm going to do a dry bake again. Uh, just add water. I found that the just add water and the just add milk. There is a little bit of difference there. And the main difference is that if you have a just add milk, and you just add water, then what happens is the uh, the cake or muffin becomes kind of real crumbly. It doesn't hold itself together, so it really needs that milk, if it says milk, to kind of hold itself together as a muffin. So I guess I'll just have to continue to buy the just add waters. So we're going to go ahead and try and make that now. <clears throat> or if I'm at home, just add milk is fine, but for the trail, just that water seems a lot easier than trying to bring the milk along. Alright, so I've got my uh, Bongo Pro set up. I am going to pull my little cap out of my hose here and allow it to start feeding some alcohol in. So one of the things I'm going to try different tonight with this particular dry bake is um, RJ Berg suggests that using carbon felt below the pot inside here to keep the bottom of the pot from getting so hot with the aluminum ring. So I thought, well, if I'm going to do that, then what's the purpose of using this big pot when all I really want to carry is this on the backpacking trip, the small pot. So I'm going to eliminate the big pot for now and try this. We made it with a burnt mess, so I'm going to try it. Now, if I get rid of the big pot, all I have left is this little pot. And if I cook directly in this, I don't think it'll work. But, I've added some parchment paper, kind of like a uh, cupcake uh, paper. It's just a round disc that I rolled out and shoved inside here. You can see. Uh, and below that, I put a piece of carbon felt, as R.J. Berg mentioned, to place that underneath to keep the stuff from burning to the bottom. So we're going to see if that actually does, if that's enough uh, distance or enough transfer of heat off the bottom. Now I didn't leave any room for it to run around the sides so this may not work. I am going to use my lid on here which uh, is a Teflon coated lid so I'm a little nervous about using that uh, with the extreme heats that this can get to. I don't know how Teflon, how long Teflon can hold up to heat uh, the 425 and such forth that it gets up to. So I'm going to try this. I'm going to put some water in here though. I want to just get an idea of uh, if it's going to start to boil, how hot it gets. Um, not for any other reason than that. Not to help the cake or anything else, but in this top little skillet, I'm going to add some water just to see if it gets up to 212 and it gets hot enough to boil water in here. I assume it will, but that'll help me know a little better. So I'm going to go ahead and light this and get it started. As it gets going, it'll pull some fuel down in there while I mix this up. So I'm going to pour my half a cup of water in here. I'm going to make a whole one tonight. Don't know if it's a good idea when I'm experimenting, but we're going to try it anyway. I generally just like to mix it up right inside here. It just makes it so much easier. And a knife is about the best thing, a butter knife is about the best thing I've found. Uh, in my pack I have a plastic uh, butter knife that I use. Uh, it's not your typical a uh, fast food plastic butter knife. It's a little more uh, sturdy than that. Um, I can't think what it's called, but it actually is a plastic that's pretty sturdy. I have a spoon and a knife that's made of a hardened plastic. And I generally take those two. Those are my lightest items that I can carry that aren't really like going to fall apart, such as a Taco Bell spark or something like that. I just I feel like I want to be able to eat my food with a decent piece of utensil. We went on a uh, scout camp up in New Mexico uh, in the mountains for two weeks. And one of our scouts, I think it was day one or day two, his knife had, or his uh, spoon, the only one that he brought, had broke. And after it broke, we didn't know for the first couple days, he carved up a spoon out of a piece of wood and was using that as his uh, 
utensil to eat with. So it was like day four or five before we realized it. And of course he didn't want to complain, but one of the scout leaders had two or three forks, or spoons, forks, whatever, type materials in his backpack. So we went ahead and gave him one for the rest of the trip. However, I think the uh, scout was uh, so proud of his um, spoon that he carved up that he really didn't want to use it. He just was uh, happy using his uh, carved up spoon. Anyways, so it can be obviously very simple to make your own spoon or utensil out of a stick and a knife, pocket knife. But like I said, I prefer to have my standard utensil that I know is going to make it through a whole trip without having to worry about it. Alright. Let's hope she doesn't burn. Okay, so it's only been about five minutes, and I will say I smell something burning, and I started to get a little nervous, but what I noticed was the uh, flames wickering around the back of here. Well, you can't see it in the front, but on the back, I think my pot must be a little off-center. We're rolling up just enough to catch the parchment paper on fire in the back. So I got a little nervous thinking my muffin was already burning, but it wasn't. It was just the paper. Uh, sticking out the back here. And you can see my, I don't know if you can see the steam coming off of that. Probably not. But it's starting to, I put some water in here. I was afraid my Teflon would get burnt if I didn't keep it cooled down a little bit on this uh, skillet in the top of here. So I threw some water in there to keep that a little cooler. And it's already starting to look like it's going to come to a boil here. Which I really don't want it boiling and spilling into the inside. But we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, another thing I wanted to show you was, every weekend I run down to my local Goodwill. Uh, just to see if there's anything cool that I could use for an alcohol stove or, you know, just to goof off with in my hobbies that I do. And I know you guys have seen probably a video that I did before where Target had these on sale for 58 cents. And I grabbed up about 40 of them when they were on sale. Or maybe it was 25, I don't recall what it was, but I, I grabbed up everything they had in stock currently. And, you know, they're doing pretty good. They're it's an odd brand name. It's not heat. It's not the heat stuff, but it burns exactly the same. I've done extensive tests back and forth, and it burns exactly the same. So I've never had any problems with that. Um, so I was happy to get it when Target was selling it. So when I was at Goodwill this weekend, I found nine more bottles of it for 49 cents. So nine bottles of Methanol alcohol, $4.41. What a bargain. Just goes to show you, sometimes Goodwill has interesting things. Not always, but every once in a while you come up with a good item at Goodwill, so it's worth your effort. Alright, I just blew it out. It's, um, hit the lights, I'm sorry. I just blew it out about 10 seconds ago. It's 22 minutes, well, it was 22 minutes when I blew it out. So we're going to let that sit there now for about, uh, oh, I don't know, 10 minutes. And at 10 minute mark, we'll take it apart and see what we have. The water never really came to a boil up top here, so that's interesting. I don't know if I, uh, when I was pulsating, what I did was I added a bunch more, and actually now I need to plug it up because now it's actually feeding the fuel in there, and I have um, no flame. So I raised it up a bunch more. That should stop from feeding. I raised it up a bunch more here. It was, I must have, uh, as the stove got hotter, it was having trouble getting the alcohol into the stove. It was pulsating back and forth through here. A bubble was. Uh, and it was never getting up because I guess this was hot and pushing the alcohol, expanding it and expanding what was in there back out. So it was never drawing any in. I also don't know if having this uh, go down and then back up like that was a problem. I never really messed with it. I got these in there, these extra... I slide that in so you can see the extra pieces in there to help with that. And that's a good chunk of uh, those little things there. So I have to see that in there too. So, Anyways, that was what I used. Got that working. Not 100% yet. I need to play with it a little bit. Uh, like, like Tenny said, it's a touchy one. I'm grabbing this. I'm a little nervous. I haven't taken the lid off yet because I'm assuming I'll lose all my steam. 
interestingly enough, uh, the moisture all got stuck to the bottom of the pan and then dripped back in. Uh, that's not from the inside of the pan, it's actually from the muffin itself, and the muffin is nowhere near done. It is almost liquefied still, so we're going to actually probably have to put it back on for a little bit. I think I'll be switching to a different lid, too, just in case. Um, I don't think that water came out of here, but there's a lot of moisture there. There's a half a cup. So, looking at that, I'm going to guess that we are nowhere near done. And I know 10 minutes, sometimes it finishes up, but not this time. Not from the way that looked. So I'm going to slap this back on here, pull my pin, and I'm going to let it air up there. There it goes. I probably can't see the bubbles through this uh, darker plastic. I can't believe it didn't even get barely cooked, so we're going to definitely have to cook for another... I don't even know. I would assume 10 minutes looking at it. Every time I uh, assume I have to cook more, I end up overcooking it, so we'll see. And I can see the fuel just shooting in there right now. So I've got to turn the light off and watch this. So I'll be back in a little bit, guys. I'm going to shoot the light off for a second so I can keep an eye on that flame. I think we'll go at least five more minutes with the flame on. All right, so it's been, well, I cooked it for another five minutes, and then I proceeded to, I turned it off. What was happening was all the uh, moisture was dripping from the bottom of this pot, this here, back in. And I even noticed there's this uh, brownish stuff that was dripping, and I'm assuming that's part of the uh, cake oil. I don't know. It was really weird to see that come dripping out. It's back, a bunch of it's back here. Can you see that? Yeah. There's a bunch of this brown dripping stuff right here. And that was dripping out of the cake when I lifted the lid off. So, it doesn't smell like oil. I don't know exactly what it is. So, nonetheless, it uh, came dripping out when I pulled the lid off, as it's doing now, again. So, I'm not really sure what that brown dripping is coming from. I'm assuming the cake, but I don't know. So, the... cake doesn't necessarily look that done, but we're going to pull it out anyway. It's very brown looking, like that uh, caramel color you're seeing there is from something. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. That doesn't look too good. It smells kind of funny. So my... That was in the bottom to keep it from burning on the bottom, hopefully. We'll see. I'm going to... It's not too hot. I can probably move that back now. The inside of my pot's spotless, so yeah, yeah, that's perfect. But the question is, what did the paper do for us? Obviously, it created some kind of brown tinge on everything, but oh, uh, you know, it did really good on the top half, but the bottom half is uh, literally burnt to the paper. I have more bad luck burning these things, so the paper is actually burnt to it in most of the places. Yeah, that wasn't exactly a good plan. So, let's see here. Too hot to pick up? Yeah, the paper's actually burnt all the way to it. I think we're done through. Oh, yeah, we're definitely done through. Oops, that's not helping. You can't see that. So, it's done through, but... The, uh... Carbon felt has a bit of a smell to it. I'm not sure what it is. I don't like it. So I may take one or two bites out of this and see how it tastes and see how far I want to go with it. Let's see what this thing tastes like. Mmm. Tastes like a blueberry muffin.